What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Tableau tutorial series. This is our very last video in the series and today we'll be doing an entire project. Now, if you're watching this video, I hope that you watch the other four videos in this series just so you can get the basics down. You kind of know what you're doing. Uh, this won't be a crazy hard project. This is a beginner tutorial series, so I'm trying to make this super easy so you can follow along. Nothing super complicated, I promise. And if you were wanting to go above and beyond and just make a lot of different dashboards or try a lot of different things, there's a ton of data in here. And so I'll show you some of the things that I would do, you know, as we go through it, of the things that I would be looking at and some of the different visualizations that I might do as well. But again, in this video, we're gonna be sticking to a lot of the basics, but I'll switch over my screen in just a second. I will show you the final product and then we will actually walk through step-by-step -step of how to do the entire dashboard. And at the end, you should have a completed project that you can add to your portfolio or, you know, just share on LinkedIn if you wanna do that as well. With that being said, let's jump over my screen and let's get started. All right, so let's get me off screen and show you what we're going to be working on today. This is the final dashboard that we're actually gonna be building. And so it's nothing crazy, right? I'm sure you have seen all of these things before. Um, and I'm just gonna help you kind of build it out, show you what to do, the buttons to click. Um, and it's really gonna be a simple walkthrough. By the end of this, you should be able to do all these things very easily. And I highly encourage looking at the data and looking at these visualizations and seeing what else you can do with it. There's a lot of different colors, a lot of different visualizations um, that you can do with this data. I'm just showing you this today. And so the more you go out there and the more you do this on your own and you mess around with stuff and, and choose different things and see how it all works, the better you're going to get. And so I highly, highly encourage doing that. Uh, so what we are going to be working with today is an Airbnb data set. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. And then I'm gonna show you the data and we're gonna just jump right into it. All right, so this is the data set that we are going to be using. This is the Seattle Airbnb open data set. And let's go down really quick. Um, there's three different CSVs in here. And so this is some of the data that we're gonna be working with, um, some date on listings and some pricing. And then there's the actual listing that shows um, the actual street address, the location, the price, the bedrooms, all of these good stuff. And then there's a reviews. Um, and it has, you know, some comments and, you know, talks about some of the reviews. So this is what we're going to be working with, but you don't have to go in here and download it. I have already combined all of these CSVs into one. I've put it on the GitHub. So I'll have a link below. So you can just click on that and you don't have to do all the stuff that I did to get this set up. Um, just so you know, this is from 2016. So this data set is a little bit old. If you want to, you can come right here and I will leave this link as well. And you can get the data set from, you know, what is this, a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is, they, they are continuing to update this. This is always updated. And so you can go ahead and download these, but some of these are the csv.gz. Um, so you may need to like convert it. I don't want to go through that process um, on, you know, in the video. And so I am just going to go with what is literally in Kaggle um, and use that. But if you want to have an updated one for your project, I just advise you to go in here and grab it yourself and that should be perfectly good. So go ahead and download the data set from the GitHub and we should be good to go. So this is the Excel that I was just talking about. This has all of our CSVs in one place. This is, you know, an Excel workbook. So in this reviews, actually let's start with the listings because that's kind of where it all stems from. Uh, we have our listing and the date or the data in here is, um, you know, really extensive. There's a lot of data in here. So let's get over really quick. Um, the listing refers to the actual home that they're renting out the Airbnb. So it shows their location. Um, and there's a lot more location information over here. I'm getting into it in, in just a second. So there's the neighborhood, the city, state, um, zip code, all stuff that, you know, may be useful. There's a latitude and longitude. It shows what type of property it is. So that's really good. Um, right over here, it has, you know, how many bathrooms, bedrooms, and beds. Um, you know, sometimes if it's a five bedroom house, it has seven beds. So that's why there's those two different um, fields. I don't know if you're familiar with Airbnb and, and you know, what they have on there, but just something to note, uh, they have the price. This is the price per day. There's a weekly price, a monthly price, and, and if there's a deposit needed. Uh, and then a cleaning fee as well. 
So a bunch of financial data that's you know super useful. We go into it a little bit, but there's so much you can do with that. Um, you know, if you want to dig into that, and that's kind of it. The rest of it's pretty uh, pretty useless. Um, and there's a lot. Of, so there's so much data in here. Almost you know more than half by far is nothing you would put in any type of visualization. Um, and this is pretty common. Uh, you're, you're not going to get <laughs> data every column where you're going to be able to use it. A lot of times it's just a lot of useless junk. And so you have to know what you're looking for and know, uh, you know, what's actually useful. So that's the listing. And then we have reviews. Now, what's really can, a little bit confusing in here and something that you just need to kind of understand about the data um, and something that if you're if you get a data analyst job, you need to understand your data because it's very easy to come in here and say, OK, there's an ID, ID field and here's an ID field. So that means that those are the same. Well, not in this case. Um, this ID field is actually the review reviews ID, not the reviewer ID that refers to like the person. This is the reviews ID. This listing ID is the actual ID right there. So really important to note. Um, and then the lot and so then they just have their comment there what they left as a review and then on the calendar um, I don't know why I'm scrolled down uh, we have this listing ID again so again that listing ID is equal to the ID in this listing table and we have a date and a price so this refers to a specific location and on this day they got eighty five dollars for it somebody rented it out um, and so then there's these like T's and F's um, let's try to find a blank one really quick. Here's a blank one. So there's these T's and F's. Uh, the T means that it was taken. Um, the F means that it's vacant. Uh, I don't know exactly what it means, uh, what the T and F means, but that we can deduce that much from this. And so you can see when and how much this person was making or this home made uh, in that time. So really, really good data in here. There's a lot to work with. Um, and, and so we're just going to be kind of I'll give you a little bit of a use case for it in a second. And then we're going to start trying to answer some of those, the building out some of the visualizations for that use case. Uh, again, you could have 20 different use cases for this data or more, um, honestly, for this data where you could build out different dashboards and different reports, literally with just this data. But, you know, we're doing a pretty general, broad project. And so it's hard to answer all of them. So, Let's jump over to Tableau. We're going to get started on this and we are going to build out everything. All right, so let's come right here. Uh, this is a Microsoft Excel. We'll open that up. Do this one. We will open it. And give it just a second. It says it's executing the query. It's pulling the data in. All right, so we have our calendar, our listing, and our reviews. Those are different tabs at the bottom. We're going to start with the listing. This is the, the kind of the main one has, um, you know, the there's I didn't show you, but there's about three thousand six hundred locations that they had in there. Uh, let's just have it update automatically. I don't know why we need to click on that. But um, so we have this listings. <clears throat> we have our uh, calendar and our reviews. What we're going to do is we're going to come in here. And we're going to open it as we did in our very last video uh, for the joins. So now that we've opened it, we can kind of go in here and we can do the joins as um, as needed. And so let's go over here and we're going to uh, let's start with calendar. I'm going to put it right there. That was super slow. I apologize. <clears throat> All right, let's wait for it to get the data. Start setting everything up. Did not think it would take this long. I apologize. No, take your time. So let's click on here. And right now it has the uh, the join based on the price, which obviously is not going to work. Um, and if you remember, there is no ID in this calendar. It's just the listing ID. Um, we can actually look right here. There's just the listing ID. So we're actually going to put listing ID is equal to ID. And right down here, we can see that we have a lot of, of well, you can't see it, uh, but we show that there is a lot of data. Um, and so we know that that is correct. We know that that is now pulling in data correctly because it's showing up down here. So that's a good thing. Now, 
in this listings, there are about 3,600, um, about 3,600 listings. And so that all the data that's in listings is going to be in there. But on the calendar, because we converted from a CSV to an Excel workbook, it isn't able to store as much information. So some of the ones in calendar may have gotten cut off. So we can just keep it this inner join because we know that if it's in listings, it is going to be in calendar. We know that it if it um, there may be some in calendar that aren't in listings. So if we really, um, you know, if we really, really wanted to, we could do a full outer or something like that. I, I haven't really thought through this as I'm talking through it in my head, but we know that uh, everything that's in listing is going to be in calendar. Uh, and so, you know, we don't really need to do anything other than an inner join. And we can also pull in these reviews and it's gonna do the same thing as before, where it's just kind of pulling in the data and it defaults to ID equals ID. Now we know that that is not correct um, because the ID in here is referring to the review ID. We need to go to the listings ID. So we need the ID to be able to you know, be part of that listings ID. If we do the ID, it goes down to 2,555 rows. If we do how it's supposed, and because that's just, you know, it's random luck. There happen to be some numbers that are in both fields um, that tie together. If we do the correct one where we hit the listing ID, it bumps it up to I think 2,373,000, oh, maybe more than that, uh, 23 million rows, right? A lot, lot, lot more. And so it's super important to get these joins right to tie them together on the right fields. If you just do it based off what Tableau tells you because it has that automated, um, you know, it goes into these fields and says, okay, these are the same exact column name. So they're most likely going to be what you're looking for. Well, it was incorrect in this point. So it's really important to check those things and make sure you're pulling in the right data. Again, we're going to keep it that inner join. Um, you know, if you wanted to, you know, try to see if there's any other data that correlate or keeping it simple today, but sometimes you need to join on multiple things. Uh, so just, uh, uh, you know, a tip. So let's get out of here. Um, and we are good to go. So this is our listings plus Tableau full project. That's what we'll, that's what we'll be working with. Um, and we, we were able to tie all three of these, um, you know, as you call them tables or sheets or whatever you want to call them, we were able to tie them together. So let's go over here to our first worksheet. Uh, and let's see. Do, 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 do. All right. So this says Tableau public only works with less than 15 million rows of data. We have 23 million rows of data. That is, uh, that's a problem. Um, and when I did this before, it didn't do that. So I, you know, we're going to work through this together. So this is date reviews. I believe this is date for, um, this is date for the calendar, which is gonna be a lot of rows of data. Um, and so I'm sure that's part of it. Let's see. Let's do years. We only want 2016. Oops. We only want 2016. Let's do okay. Let's see what that does. Let's see if that gets us under what we need. Um, we only want 2016 data anyways. So if it's in 2017, we were gonna take it out um, anyway. So we'll see if that gets us underneath. I have absolutely no, if this take, ends up taking like 20 minutes, I will just cut it and you know you won't have to wait as long as I'm waiting. So let's see how long it takes. All right, so it took about 20 minutes and it did absolutely nothing. Um, one thing I do know is that we don't actually use this review tables at all. Uh, it was just for demonstration purposes. So we're gonna remove that and let's see if that helps us in any way. Because if it does, we're just gonna keep it as is. Um, you know, the reviews table is really just for demonstrating how to do the joins, uh, but we weren't actually using any of the data for any of the visualizations. Although you could. Again, I wanna see how long this takes uh, and I'll cut ahead. All right, so that worked uh, perfectly. It 
apparently took out all the data that we needed or all the rows that we needed to get under that level. Again, I was just doing that to show you the, the that joins, how you need to change the uh, columns to make sure that it joined properly. We don't actually use it for any of the visualizations, so their end product is gonna be totally fine. I don't know why uh, this didn't happen to me when I, when I created this whole thing already. Um, so I'm just going to move forward because uh, I make mistakes. So uh, let's keep moving. The first one that we are going to make is that uh, is that colorful one. I'll probably pop it up on screen so you can see it. Uh, well, if I remember, I'm going to pop it up on screen. Um, it's the colorful one. It's the price by zip code. So we're going to be looking at these zip codes and kind of see, um, you know, how expensive is each zip code. Um, and before we actually start, I just rem remembered I want to talk to you about the use case for this data. I want to imagine you to imagine that you're working for somebody and they're like, hey, where, you know, I, I want to start an Airbnb business. I want to know where I should go. Where should I buy up, buy a home, put it up on Airbnb and start renting it out? Where's the best place? You know, what are some of the factors that I should be looking at? Uh, and so that's kind of what our use case is. So we're going to, some of the things that he cares about are things like bedrooms, um, location, which is really important and how much price he's actually going to get, uh, how much money can he charge. And so he's trying to optimize that to make sure that whatever rental he gets, he can make a lot, the most profit from instead of choosing something that, you know, he thinks would work, but you know, in the end, he's actually not making that much money. So those things are important. So that's our use case. We're trying to help this guy out, help him find a really good Airbnb. Um, so let's take a look at these zip codes real quick. We have uh, quite a few of them. And there's one that's null, uh, we'll exclude that. Or if, if it doesn't have a zip code, we'll just exclude those because they're not gonna show up on the, these visualizations anyways. Um, and so we wanna look at the price. So we just wanna find uh, the price, which should actually be down here. And not the sum. Uh, no, we wanna look at the average price. And let's order that. This is great. Um, so this is the most expensive one, uh, zip code 98134 at $206 uh, per uh, for the average price. Uh, but let's give that some color really quick. Let's, uh, where's the zip code? It's up here. So let's take that zip code. We're gonna put it right over here. We're gonna do color. And it's gonna give it some uh, assorted colors. Now, these colors are gonna, um, when we do the map in just a little bit, these colors will um, match what we're doing in there. And so, you know, I, I like to try to color coordinate things. Um, we're not doing going too crazy with the colors today. So this is our very first visualization. Congratulations. It is, uh, it is complete. So uh, we can label this one and we can just do price by zip code. And I'll make that uh, bold. I don't know. I usually like it bold. Uh, we'll apply. We'll do it like that, and boom. First one is done. Uh, and this is our starting place to say, uh, hey, person who's looking to buy this Airbnb, here are the zip codes where they are able to charge the most um, for, for their Airbnb. So let's go over to the second sheet. And we are gonna be doing the map. And so um, map is pretty easy, but it it's pretty easy once you actually get the data that you need. Although there's a lot of different data that you can use for the actual um, map right here. You need something that shows um, the location. And there's a lot of things that show location in here. In fact, they already um, provide a latitude and longitude. And then at the bottom, they generated a latitude and longitude from, from some different um, fields. And then there's just a bunch of different um, state. There's um, states, there's zip codes, there are, uh, I think another one, uh, yeah, like country. There's a lot of location data in here. So which one do we wanna use? We wanna stay consistent. We don't want to deviate from that and start using different um, longitude and latitudinal uh, coordinates because that could throw off our, our results completely. We wanna stay consistent with what we're using. So we actually want to use this zip code, but when we pull it up here, it's gonna give us uh, basically the same, um, you know, it's gonna show these zip codes, but we are gonna, right over here, we're gonna click on this one, and now it's going to separate them out. So now we have all of these, um, you know, kind of separated out. 
what you might get when you first do this um, is it might look like this. You may have to zoom in. Um, I know that that happened to me the other time. Let me go to here. That's what happened to me uh, just when I first did it. So uh, know that that may happen. And we want to change the colors the exact same way that we did them before. So we're just going over here. We're doing color. And these colors do, um, they do or should match up with the, um, with the other ones. Let me um, exclude this. Let me see if it does. Nine, eight, one, three, four. That's the blue. And right over here, nine, eight, one, three, four. That's a blue. I, I I believe they are going to be the same. Yep. And so just scrolling back, if you look at the zip code on the far right, uh, they are the same. So if you look at like this section right over here, I, I just wanting to make sure I'm not going crazy uh, before I get into this and realize I'm not correct at all. So uh, now what we want is, you know, this doesn't really give us any information. If I was just to glance at this map, I would have no idea what you're trying to show me, um, any information off this. So we want to show some actual information. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually add the label to this so that you can see it. You know, when you're going over here and you see, okay, here's this um, zip code um, in the dashboard, when we create it, you can click on this. But if you just want to do it visually without having to click anywhere, you'll be able to see, okay, 98134, that's right here. So this location right here is, you know, able to charge a lot of money. It's probably a really nice neighborhood. So, um, and we can back that up by putting the average price. So these, these two visualizations are really, they really go hand in hand. Uh, we're going to add, oops, not the sum. This one needs to be the average. So you go to this measure, the sum, go to average, and there you go. And these should match. So this should be 206.6. Um, I'm looking at the average price right here. And then we go over here, 98134, 206.6. So this all matches. Um, and we can uh, we can actually change that size a little bit if you want to actually get it in, um, get it within each of these things. You know, adjust it as you see fit. I think that's fine right there. Um, no need to mess with it anymore. All right, so let me see. I think that is everything for this one. I don't know if I want to add anything else. Uh, no, I'm going to keep it how it is. So that is our second visualization. Again, these ones are directly uh, correlated. And, and, you know, this there's just different ways to visualize it. This one you can see actually on the map where it is. And the average price this is when you can see from highest to low so again you know sometimes when you're doing these visualizations you're going to have these accompanying um uh these accompanying visualizations in your dashboard that's very normal so let's move over to the third one and for this third one um you know something that our guy was looking at is he's like okay well you know i'm thinking about listing it on airbnb but I also want to live in it. So I want to know the best times to actually, um, you know, put it on the market for people to be able to use. And so I was like, okay, man, no problem. Uh, let's, let's take a look at when, when are people spending the most money in Airbnbs? And we actually had that calendar. Um, if you remember, let's look, let's see this calendar. So we had this available, the date, the listing, all of that stuff. Um, and, Let's look at the date in here. Uh, and we obviously don't want it like this. We want it to be more uh, more of a time series. And we're going to do, be doing that based off of uh, the price for the calendar. So let's go see if we can find that really quick. OK, here's the price. Where is that calendar one? Let me see. Okay, there's the calendar. Oh, here. All right, totally forgot where that was supposed to be. Oof, that looks terrible. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's let's start working on this because this needs some work. Obviously, uh, this is the worst visualization I have ever seen. <laughs> um, so we need to work on this a little bit. What we need to do is we need to change. Uh, whoops. We need to change some, some the way that these dates are are seen. 
So right here is, uh, these are two separate things. So if I go right here and I do by quarter, it's just gonna change the quarters here, right? That's, that isn't really helpful. We actually wanna keep the year here. What we wanna do it is by year, we wanna separate it by year, um, but we want to separate it. Let's just do, I don't know, let's try week and see what it looks like. Okay, this is great. This is, this is what we're looking at. Again, um, if we went back and changed this like quarter, it uh, changed it quarter, and then change it to week, it would show the quarters, but it wouldn't show everything, right? This isn't all the data that we need. And so, you know, you really need to make sure that you're doing this correct. I, it's on, by default, it's almost always year, but if you're looking at it via quarter, so like, let's say somebody comes in and you say, hey, what quarters, I wanna I'm break these out by quarters um, and not year over year, that's how you would do this. But in the year, we want to break it out by uh, the week. And you see this huge drop off um, at the end. Well, that is actually because the data doesn't go past that. Um, there's just like one day of data <laughs> or one one um, week of data in here with actual um, with January of 2017 data. So it just drops off because this, this is a sum. So it only adds up to like... Um, 591,000 compared to like the 2 million. So we want to get rid of that. Um, and how do we do that? Uh, let's see. I think it's filter. Bum, 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 bum. How's it format? No, it's not format. What am I thinking? Bear with me. Uh, let's see. A filter. Well, I was looking for it. I just couldn't find it. Uh, let's bring it back to the 31st. Let's see if that fixes what we need. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, that, that's all you had to do. Um, and the reason that this is helpful and oftentimes you'd have several years worth of data in here, um, and then you could have, you could do even do something like this, um, like this one where it has multiple lines. The reason that this is helpful is because if I'm telling my friend, let's, I mean, just, I'm going to say it's a friend uh, or business partner, whatever you, whatever you want to use this use case for, I'm going to tell him, Hey, the beginning of January, all the way until like you know, even f February, it's like really low. It's half. So there's not a lot of people traveling because everyone travels when? At the end of the year. So in November, December for the holidays to visit family, um, and then in the summer for vacations, I would tell him just based off this one thing, I would say, hey, over the summer and then at, at, at the end of the year and during the holidays, that's when I would be renting out your Airbnb. Okay, so just this one very simple visualization can help him understand the best times um, to do that. That may have been intuitive. You may have already known that, but you can prove it with the data, which is always really helpful. Um, and let's see, is there anything else that we need to do with this? Uh, I'm just going to label it and I'm going to say um, revenue for a year. Let's do bold, do apply. There we go. Did I label this last one? I didn't. Let's label that last one. And we'll do price per zip code. Price per zip code. We'll just keep it at that. Let's keep it simple. Um, and let's do that. All right. I believe we have two more. So we have done. Um, We've done three of them. Um, we got the zip codes. We've got the um, you know the time of the year. Now, something else that he was wanting to know is um, you know just how things affect it, and something that's going to affect the price of the actual Airbnb is going to be the amount of bedrooms. So the the larger the house, the more bedrooms, the more it's going to cost typically. So we can take a look at that. Let's pull in these bedrooms. Um, and that will be our columns. Uh, no, it won't. What we need to do, um, and so I, I knew this was going to happen. I just forgot it until right uh, until right now. What we this right now is actually a um, it's a, a value, right? So it's a number, and that's totally um, reasonable because if we go right here, we do count distinct. That's because there's only seven values, right? It goes. There's zero bedrooms, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to seven bedrooms. Right now it has it as a numerical value. We want to um, change that 
to create it as um, these measure names, not a value. So we're going to um, we're going to remove this. We're going to go right down here. We're going to click this drop down, and we're going to say convert to dimension. And so now we're going to add it as a dimension. So there, that looks um, much more normal. I really quick. I'm going to I'm going to keep these in here for a second, but we're going to get rid of these nulls and zeros because if a home has zero bedrooms, that's a problem. Um, and so we want to look at the price again. Let's go down here in the listings. It should be the price. Now, this is the price for the location per day. Um, if you want to look at monthly or, or, you know, stuff like that, they have that data. Um, but we're just going to do the price, the average price, not the sum. Um, although this is helpful. So just really quick before we change it, this is going to show you which ones make the which ones are bringing in the most money. It also may show you which ones are the most common. Um, those are all different visualizations that we can do. But the one that brings in the most money uh, that brought in 63 or that has $63 million worth of um, worth of listings. So they all add up. Those one bedrooms are doing phenomenal. Half of that uh, are two bedrooms at 30 million, three bedrooms at 18 million and, and so on and so forth. So there's a ton of one bedroom ones. We may even keep, we could even keep that in there, um, you know, if we wanted to. Um, and then we do something similar later, but you can keep something like this in there. What we will do really quick though, is we're gonna do the same thing that we've been doing is keeping average. Um, and we are going to get rid of this because if it doesn't have the bedrooms, you know, that's not helpful to us. And if it has zero bedrooms, that's, uh, that's genuinely a problem. I will not be renting an Airbnb with my family. Uh, that has zero bedrooms in it. So now we have this and it would be really helpful to be able to see that in the visualization. I mean, it's just kind of hard to see it as is. I mean, it just does not hurt to add that right here. Do a label. Um, why is it angled like that? Maybe I just need to move it out more. That looks much better. Um, that's the average price. That cannot be right. That's the sum. That's why. So let's go over here. Let's make that average as well. Much better because uh, if the price was $3 million for a three bedroom, I would not be going there. So this is really, really useful information for our friend, right? If um, he wants to, you know, get into those one, that one bedroom area. You know, you're not going to be making a lot of money. It may be low cost up front, but he's not going to be making a lot of money. It significantly goes up when you reach these five and six bedroom homes, which makes sense. I mean, if it has five or six bedrooms in it, it's probably a really large, really nice home. And you can charge a lot more money. And our friend is uh, extremely wealthy. He can buy whatever he wants. And so he may be looking at these um, larger ones, seeing that there's a much higher return um, on his investment, the higher and the more bedrooms he goes. So we're going to keep it just as it is. Um, and let me see if there's anything else that we want to do with this. No, we're going to keep it just like this. Uh, and the last one is by far the easiest. And we actually just discussed it a little bit. We want to know, you know, what's his competition look like? So um, for those, for the bedrooms specifically. So let's go back up to the bedrooms. We want that one to be right here in our rows. So we show um, these and then we just want to count of um, how many listings there are. So we can do that via the listings ID. So here's our listings. Each ID represents one location or one home. So we're going to do that right here. Uh, that looks absolutely terrible. That looks terrible. What am I doing wrong here? Oh. Um, let me see. Uh, one thing we need to do is we want to get rid of these nulls and zeros. Do that really quick. Um, and then we don't want to do just the ID because I <laughs> I'm realizing now uh, what I'm doing. I need to convert this to a numeric so we can do a count on it. So let's um, oops. Let me see what what is happening. This is terrible. All right, let's put this back. Let's make, let me see if I can just um, do an attribute. Let's do the 
count. And let's do text. Um, no, it needs to be a distinct count. Because that's, that's basically like um, a count of the numbers themselves, not each individual ID. Okay, it took some figuring out. I'm going to keep that in there because you guys need to see, uh, a, a lot of you guys like seeing when I make mistakes. So, you know, it makes it feel like when you make mistakes, it's okay. Um, and I'm all about that. So I'm leaving that in there. You guys can see me fail a little bit. Um, I just forgot how to do that for a second. And this is exactly what we're looking for, right? We want, we now, it, it showed us in that visualization that we were looking at earlier before we um, switched it to the average price. This is showing us that there are, for one bedrooms, there's 1,800 one bedroom, two that have 483, three that have 206, four that have 55, only five that have 20, and six that have five. So the more you go up, the less and less it is, or the less and less competition there's going to be. Now, is there a lot of demand for four bedroom, five bedroom, six bedroom? Uh, that's for our friend to figure out. Um, well, maybe we'll help them out with that later um, in the with the data. You know, we could look at the reviews that we had. Um, there's so much data in here and we could absolutely figure that out. But for what it's worth, we're giving him this initial stuff and he'll have follow-up questions for us later. That's how it always works, I promise. Um, so now we're good with this one. Let's label this one. Did I label the last one? I will go back and look. Um, distinct, I, I'm going to butcher this one. I'm going to do distinct count of, of bedroom listings. I don't, that may not make sense at all, but we're keeping it. So we're going to do bedroom, apply, okay. Let me see if I added the label on this one. I didn't. Let me do that real quick. We'll do average price per bedroom. Again, I'm, oops, you didn't see that. I'm just going with whatever is coming to my head. This probably wouldn't be what I would keep if I had this or like an actual project, but it works for now. So we have our five visualizations, one, two, three, four, and five, and let's create our dashboard. That's gonna be this button right here. So we're gonna click that. We are going to uh, go right here. I'm gonna say automatic. So we want to use this entire area. And so now we're just going to start, um, you know, pulling them over. And I'm just going to start from the very first one and go to the very last one. Keep it really simple. So this very first one, we'll pull it over. It, you know, it's going to take up the entire space until you start adding all the other ones. We'll include this one right here. Um, and well, let's leave it as it is. You know, we'll adjust it uh, once it gets to its final place. Now we have number three. We'll add this one on this side. It looks terrible right now, but give it a second. Uh, and then we have number four. We're going to add that across the top. Okay, it's already starting to look a little better. And um, maybe I add. I, you don't have to keep this in here, um, but you definitely can. Uh, let's start to adjust things a little bit. Do do. Let's see if I can zoom in one more. No, nope. I'm going to do it just like that. Actually, let me see. If I can make it even just a little bit closer. Perfect. Uh, that's the best you're going to get. Um, if you didn't see, I use this um, magnifying and then I could click on the area that I wanted to see. So we're going to keep that just like that. We're going to move this over because that is... Um, Definitely not as important. Um, and then we're gonna move this way over as well. to Keep it just like that. Again, this is something where if you want to, you can click on this. Um, it did, I don't know why, uh, I can't remember how to get this connected, but it's, you definitely can. Um, but, oh, okay. I was just clicking on the wrong one, that's why. That is why. But you can click over here and you, you know, it'll filter um, based on, so if I go to this one, oops. Oh, geez, what am I doing? Oh, this is a travesty. Okay, let's try to get this back. All right, I'm not touching it, guys. You get the gist. You can mess around with it yourself. I'm not messing this up. Okay, so the next thing we need to add is the very last one. That's going to go right up here. And then we're just going to kind of move it off to the side. 
and um, let's see. I'm going to add, yeah, add this caption. Um, if you've never seen something like this before, um, and I actually want to make this bigger as well. Oh, geez, give me a second. It's, it's kind of lagging a little bit. And make this a little bit, nah, maybe I don't want it as wide, but I definitely want it a little taller. Give it a second. Yeah, let me scooch this back. Just like that. That's fine. Uh, we can keep it like that. In my original one, I didn't have this. Um, you can get rid of this if you want. You know, you can um, you know, just exit out right here if you want to do that. But there you have it. Uh, this is the entire thing. So we started from the very start. Um, we started with this one then this one. Uh, did some, um, and this is, you know, all the zip, all of our zip code work. Then we took a look at the calendar where we looked at the price and did some time series visualization. And then we're looking at the bedrooms and, and the count of bedrooms. And so this should be really helpful for our friend. It should be a, an initial dashboard to get him going. And once he sees this, he's going to have a million other questions and he's going to want another dashboard for different data that's in there. He's going to ask about Okay, well, what if I want to do it weekly or, you know, I want to rent it out for the month or, you know, how many um, reviews are people, five star reviews are people giving on, you know, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom. These are all things that, you know, he may ask and then we'd have to build out in the real world. This is what happens all the time. You know, they make a request and then they're like, oh, this is great, but I also want this. So, um, you know, your friend is is going to be right in line with just about everyone else. Um that has ever gotten a dashboard uh, for work or for personal use. With that being said, this is it. Um, we have done the entire thing. Now, if you want to share this, it is super, super easy to share. Um, and I'm going to try to remember how to share it. Uh, so we're going to do save to Tableau public as, and we're going to do this and we're going to make it, um, let's do air B and B. Is it like, is it a capital B? Is it like that? No, that doesn't look right. Airbnb, uh, we'll do full project and we'll save. And that is being created right now. Um, and I will save this. So if you guys want to go look at this, you can. Um, and I'll provide a link in the description as well for that and see if yours looks um, similar to mine or better than mine. Give it a second because it's thinking. All right, so here it is. So here's our final our final project. Um, and if you followed step by step, then you should get this exact or very, very similar to this one. Again, I encourage you to, if you want to have the up-to-date data, to go to that um, link in the description that has um, the, the most recent data. And they update that, I believe, monthly. So you can go there, get the most recent data, and then you can do stuff. And you can create a beautiful project just like this. Um, but with the, you know, the most recent data, again, I use the Kaggle data just so you guys can remember. And I encourage you to look at the different data points that are in the Excel. There is so much in there and you can use, uh, honestly, like there's probably 30 or 40 other fields that you could be using in there that we never even touched. Um, but for this project, we were keeping it pretty simple. And so go do that, make completely unique dashboards and, and visualizations and create projects and add it to your portfolios so that you can create uh, a fantastic portfolio website and get a job. And that's what this is all about. Um, it's about upskilling and, and getting these skills so that you can, you know, get a job or, or do better in your job. So I hope this has been helpful. I really appreciate you guys joining me in, in doing this entire project with me. I have no idea how long this is. This probably this could be like an hour for all I know. Um, so thank you so much for sticking with me this entire time. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I will see you in the next video.